afternoon. So what a Super Bowl it was as the Patriots won a thriller in overtime 34-28. to By the way, the Falcons had a 28-3 to lead, and they somehow blew it. Why? I don't know. Well, well, we'll get right to it. So, first quarter was scoreless. You know, some teams moved the field but couldn't move far enough, so they had to punt. In the second quarter, LeGarrette Blunt fumbled. The Falcons had a long drive. You know, Devontae Freeman was great early in the game, had a lot of long runs, including the first one. And then he caught a screen pass that could have sealed the deal for the Falcons, definitely made it closer. And then it was a 14 nothing lead as the Patriots couldn't score. And then, as it looked like they were going to cut in half, Robert Alford ran back about 85 yards, and it was 21 to nothing. eventually piled up to 28-3. to And then, when I was thinking... When it was twenty-eight to three, I was thinking, I was thinking, well, this is gonna be a blowout. This may be not a classic. Well, it turned into one of the greatest games in NFL history. As we'll get to that. So, the Patriots scored. Gaskowski missed extra points, twenty-eight to nine, and then they kick a field goal, and eh, pretty early in the fourth quarter. So then it's. 28 to 12, and then here's what happened. So the Falcons just need a first down or two, and it's probably over. Dante Hightower comes on the rush, causes the strip sack. All of a sudden, the Patriots have life. When that happened, I thought, the Patriots, they actually might tie this game, maybe even win it. This actually might be a game, which would happen is they kept stopping them for shorter games. You know, the Falcons' offense was starting to die down. They scored. Direct snap to James White. Okay, now it's even. By the way, I want to go back to something earlier. When they cut it to 19, they did onside kick. And the Falcons at their 40. They just had to get a few first downs. And they couldn't score. They didn't score. How do you not score in a position like that? That's why the Falcons lost. They couldn't, when they're in position to win the game, they couldn't do it. And then, okay. So it's 28 to, so now it's 28 to 20. So the Patriots, so the, or no, the Falcons have the ball. Devontae Freeman gets a long screen pass. About that again, about 35, 40 yards. And then Julio Jones makes that outstanding catch as he made some couple tough catches earlier. He catches it, toes near the sideline, one of the better catches in Super Bowl history. And that would have been the play of the game. That would have been the game's defining moment if they could have kicked the field goal and won. So then they give the ball to Freeman. And he can't go anywhere. Does not go anywhere. And then they pass of course he's sacked which play calling by Shanahan that was a bad play call yes he ran on first down he lost a yard maybe they want to say okay let's we got to be more aggressive and then it clearly didn't work maybe we'll try the run again so they're out of field goal range right but then they pass it to Sanu okay they're back in field goal range no there's a penalty you cannot make penalties like that in the Super Bowl so then right after that They stopped them, so now they have to punt, and they have the ball about their eight-yard line, so Brady, you know, faced pressure throughout the drive, you know, made some key first downs, you know, Malcolm Mitchell, he was great in the fourth quarter, you know, his clutch, only a rookie out of Georgia, a fourth-round pick, and then Dettelman catch, you know what I think about that, in some ways it was half luck, half skill, so Alford, could he have caught it? Yeah, he could have caught it, that could have sealed the Super Bowl, and what the Falcons did so many times is they couldn't make enough plays. They had to do just a few more things. I don't know how you lose that Super Bowl. Worst collapse in NFL history, maybe in sports history. Okay, so Julian Edelman catches it somehow, which is about an inch or so from the ground, and then they move up the field, get a few more first downs, tie the game. Then the Patriots stop the Falcons, so they win overtime. And throughout the drive, you know, Brady just did some patient throws, you know, found guys found guys slowly but steadily and then there's a huge pass interference call put them in the one and when that happened I thought it's over it's over James White scored you know had two rushing touchdowns plus a receiving touchdown plus had 15 receptions you know that's now a Super Bowl record I don't know when will be broken and he could have been Super Bowl MVP he wasn't it was did it deserve to be Brady yeah it did you know threw for 466 yards I think he through like 64 passes, you know, in the fourth quarter, it became vintage Brady, you know, the last two drives, he was incredible, 
you know, those, those pick sixes and stuff. So in some ways you think, oh, you take away that pick six, you take away that fumble, just things that absolutely shouldn't happen. Turnovers should not happen. Then the Falcon, or then the Patriots win by a little bit more, but it wasn't the case. The Falcons, they should have won. How did they blow it? Well, multiple things. They're up 28 to 3. They couldn't move anymore. Their offense crashed. The fumble. And then bad play calling. You know, the defense, of course, crashed. Of course, the defense was on the field far more than the offense. So they were clearly worn out. So one of the worst losses in NFL history. I don't know how. As I said time and time again, how the Falcons lost. But they blew their shot. At a Super Bowl. And when you look at it. You know last year at the Panthers. I said oh they'll be back many times. Well that's what you think. But I've kind of learned that. You know when you lose that game. You don't know when you're going to come back. That was their chance. So what about legacies. Well for Tom Brady. He has five Super Bowls. You know when I said before the game. If Brady wins. He will have. Submitted himself as the greatest quarterback in NFL history. Same thing with Bill Belichick. Well, the debate's closed. And who knows? Maybe they can win another one or two more Super Bowls. You know, we'll see how long it goes. Let's say they have a five-year window. Okay, so Brady plays till he's 45. Man, they stay at this level. Maybe they can win three or four more Super Bowls. Does Brady have six? You know, it was funny. I said he would never have six. I was like, that's, that's the number reserved for Michael Jordan, the iconic six. Well, Brady has five, which is as many as, you know, the great athletes of the, you know, the previous 20 years in the NBA. Kobe, five. Jeter, five. Of course, in baseball, this is not a thing. It only applies to NBA players and quarterbacks and other sports. It's really just how good your teams were, you know, maximum potential. So, Brady has five, you know, could have seven. Weren't for that Tyree catch. Weren't for that Manning Inc. catch. Could have none, you know, maybe the Rams could have scored more against the greatest show on turf. Maybe the, you know, the Panthers could have had a few more better drives. Maybe the Eagles and all that stuff, you know, it could be 7-0, could be 0-7. All games were incredibly close in the Super Bowl. And that's just not the way it went. So what I have to say is the Patriots, they have just as many Super Bowls as the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. The only team with more is the Steelers with six. So the Patriots, you know, it's funny, you know, let's, let's rewind to 2001. Okay. The Patriots, the Steelers have four, the Cowboys and 49ers are tied at one with five Super Bowls. Neither of them have won since the Steelers won two since and the Patriots, they won five, you know, it was a, you know, remarkable decision-making, you know, to bring in Bill Belichick back in 2000 and Tom Brady Belichick at the time. Yeah, he was fired by the Cleveland Browns right before they moved to Baltimore. And Brady was just a sixth round pick out of Michigan, so not many people knew who he was. And, you know, even Brady, he was determined to take over. And he was outstanding throughout his career. Had, you know, had so many big time drives. And, you know, the Patriots, the team with the terrible luck, you know, with Curse, Catch, Manningham, Tyree. Look at all those moments and you think, oh, the Patriots, oh, what terrible luck they have. Man, well, their luck turned with kind of that Edelman catch. It kind of replaced all those other catches. So you see what they did and look, I really like the moves they made. You know, they had some skilled players, they had some key players, that all sorts of players step up. It wasn't just Tom Brady, but look. I think they can win the Super Bowl next year. I think they can win a couple more. Of course, you want to look at other moments and think, eh, there's Peyton Manning in 2013. Well, two years later, his career's over. So, look, we don't know how much longer Tom Brady will be good for. He says he wants to play for another five or ten years. Can you believe him? Certainly. You know, he has the incredible work ethic, the great mind of kind of the all-time greats, you know, we look at all the greats have an incredible work ethic, it's Kobe Bryant, of course, his career was over at 38, which is remarkably long, basketball is a little different different game as, say, when you're a quarterback, and then all the all-time greats had incredible work ethics, Brady and Belichick are no exception, 
So what does this mean for the Falcons? Well, the Falcons, they were so close to having that Super Bowl. They, like I said, they blew it. And if they would have won that, they would have been heroes in Atlanta. They would have been Atlanta's first, second championship ever in a span of 50 years. Going to the new stadium, you know, people would just think it's remarkable of all their potential. Look, the Falcons have potential. They have Freeman and Coleman. Freeman could be a free agent after this next year, so he could leave. And you look at their young defense, Julio Jones in his prime, Matt Ryan potentially in his prime. I think they can come back. Of course, that division, which I think of it, I think Jameis will only get better and the Bucks will only get better. I think the Panthers can bounce back and who knows with Drew Brees and stuff, but the Saints, I think the only team doesn't have a shot. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And then the Patriots, they don't really have any true competition you know, the Dolphins, yes, they made it to the playoffs, but I think they're the worst playoff team out there. They just did not, they were, they just were, you know, they were shorthanded. So we'll see with the Dolphins. We'll see really how great Tannehill is next year and if they can move up to what they did this year. And just think how scary they could be if they didn't have that, don't have a slow start like that next year. The Jets, they're going nowhere. The Bills, eh, the past two years, they thought they look good. They look good. They look good. No. They're not very good, so we'll see. You know, let's talk about some of the other playoff teams. Can they make it to the Super Bowl next year? The Packers, well, the thing with the Packers, we know Aaron Rodgers will be back. You know, we'll see what the running situation is like. Does, does Eddie Lacy stay? Do they draft a back like Christian McCaffrey or Delvin Cook if they're somehow available? I would snag them if they were. How good is, how much better is the defense play? They may need to address the secondary, which kind of cost them throughout the the year when they were at four and six and then when they lost in the conference championship game what about the Steelers is Bell leave you know what I've from the reports of I've heard it seems very likely that he's going to stay you know we'll see what happens but I think Bell's going to come back and he's only 24 years old which I think he has four or five more good years left in him at least maybe more look at Antonio Brown the best receiver of his era the defense for the Steelers, you know, they're young. You know, they're getting better. Still showed some lapses this year. And, you know, we'll see. And then, yeah, you, you see the Cowboys. Dak and Zeke, you know, you look at them. They can be great for years to come. This should just be the beginning of, of their era. Who knows with the Seahawks. Maybe they find a way once again, but it looks like their defense is on decline at this point. And when you build a defense like that, they can only last for so long. And then finally, look at the AFC side who lost the Chiefs. I don't know. They seem like the same team. Can they make a run in it? Will they? I don't know. So the two Super Bowl favorites going into this year, you know, I don't know what could be. It's way too early to pick. You know, that's just an example of some of the teams. As some teams have better shots than others. Oh, yeah, I think the Raiders will be great next year. It'll be interesting to see Derek Carr in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens with that. And then maybe the Texans get a quarterback like Sean Watson. And maybe he's great right away and they're a Super Bowl contender. So there's so many possibilities. Like I said, we won't know for sure until after the free agency and draft. So for now, I get, I'd say the Patriots are favorites, you know. I really think. I don't see why Tom Brady's dominance is going to end anytime soon. I really don't. The Falcons are talented. And, you know, so many outcomes. So, you know, it's been a remarkable season. You know, a free agency draft coming up. So, like I said, I wanted to give my opinions on the Super Bowls. Yes, the Falcons blew it. So, we'll see what the teams are like next year. And, you know, thank you for listening throughout this NFL season. And we might get in a draft preview show and we'll definitely review what happened in free agency but thank you for listening and by the way nba podcast launches next season so feel free to listen to that as well and thank you for listening